So our customer Lisa requested this ring. She wanted a signet ring, class ring style signet with um, her name um, and she loves dragonflies. We put dragonflies on both sides of the ring and we have her initials cut out, um, engraved into the top of the piece. Um, so we went ahead and built the ring for her and I went ahead and anticipated that we might have to make some changes at this point. We, we don't know for sure, but because we have this great history tree and we can build things parametrically, I went ahead and um, just built some basic parametrics into it as I, as I was building it, anticipating that she may come in and want to make some changes to it. Um, and I don't have to undo any steps and then rebuild them. Um, I always can, of course, but... You know, just anticipating that we can build a little smarter so if she does come in and make those changes. Um, some quick examples, let's look at the um, history here. So my shank here is built on a curved sweep, the boolean where I cut out the panel for the sides of the signet. Um, we got some duplications here, some extrusion, the text, uh, everything, everything is tracked. Um, it's built as a three path sweep and those sweeps are built on a rail builder which is all everything I do is linked back to this ring size builder I think the ring size is very important if I need to make this ring again change the size I can do so things like that so some some simple examples real quick just to show you my um, my side view for my ring rail builder instead of having to draw the curve three-dimensionally I have it linked to parametrically linked to this side view curve here. So you can see the ring's a little wider than I probably need it, so I'm gonna bring it in about a millimeter, recompute. Okay, and you can see at the bottom it's going through all those steps of that history of that, that shank, recalculating them to the new size. And we can make that change. Okay, the next thing, um, back to the rail builder here at the top of my tree. It's one of the earlier things I did. So we can see the, the thing is a little tall. Maybe I want to make the ring a little thicker. So the rail builder is creating the curves using these constraints here. So if I want to make the ring a bit taller, shank a little bit thicker, just make that change again. It's all beautifully linked together. So I just recompute. We get the same ring, just a bit thicker top on it. Okay. So some basic examples, um, but we've got the ring built and we've, we've added some parametric links in there for her. Um, and she'll come in and take a look and we'll show her the rendering of what we have so far. So the customer returns, she um, likes everything else, but she, she changed her mind on the initials, not quite what she was thinking. Um, she also decided, okay, I have this half carat stone I can use, let's set that in there instead. So this is a pretty you know, pretty big design change, not, not too big, but it's a design change. It's not something I could have anticipated as far as you know the setting a stone in here instead of just cutting out some initials, completely different. So we don't have to scrap anything, we don't have to start over, still not a big deal. So what I'll do is in this case I could reuse the base part of this and and build the stone on that um, but I'm just gonna undo that boolean and take away the initials I just hid them I might need them again later um, I might save as here and do a second iteration of my file just in case I change their mind again I can go back to the old one um, so you still have that option of, of creating iterations of your file too. You're not just going to use history and change it back and forth, change it back and forth. So plenty of um, choices of the way you design in 3Design. So what we'll do is we'll change this up. I already went ahead and set up a few curves again, not so much focusing on the design itself, but the processes of the changes. So this is a quick loft. And another quick boolean. Okay, so we have our top part of our setting. Okay, we'll go ahead and add her stone. I'm going to add her stone on top of my ring size builder. Again, I want that stone linked to my ring size. So when I make my ring size changes later if needed, it'll also change with it. So build my stone. Okay, go ahead and set it up 
in here the way I want it. Okay, so whatever parameter I just set, you can see we can do things with handles or we can set mathematically parameters x, y, and z direction. The carat weight was half a half a carat by default, so that works. So we have that set up real quick. I'll just add some claws. Um, we would do some stone cutters to cut the seats and things like that, but for this simple um, demo, we'll keep it keep it basic again. So we'll add my claws. And trying to think back to the design, I think it was just a three claw setting, so we'll do that. So again, I'm gonna set all my parameters. Now I selected the stone. We saw that on this first tab. I'm linking everything to the stone. So if my stone shape or size changes, my claws will update with them. So, okay, we'll go in here and I'll round the tops of these. We'll go ahead and adjust the heights, etc. Give it a little offset. And then change the positioning here. So I'm just going to do two claws on the top. And then place the third one at the bottom. Okay. Pretty simple claw setting. Um, so that's what she asked for. That's what, what we'll give her. Okay. So once again, we'll render this out, show it to her again. So our sister comes in with her. She wants the exact same ring, um, but she has some changes. Of course, the name on the side, unless the two sisters happen to be both named Lisa. Um, she also has a bigger stone. She has a three carat stone instead of the half carat. Um, so we'll make those changes for you. Um, the other thing is she's a size eight. So let's go ahead and I will start by fixing the name on the side. Find my sketch here. I did not label everything as well as I should have. There we go. So here's the text for Lisa. Just click in there. It is also based on parameters. So say her sister's name is Mary. We validate, recompute. So recut that. Now we have Mary sticking out of the side instead of Lisa. It's also mirrored to the other side. So that's the first step. Go back here and hide that for you. So again, um, the stone size is now a three quarter instead of a half carat. So I just go and change my stone size. Validate that. My prongs need to be updated. Just hit recompute. We have the bigger stone. The name's changed now. One more step. Everything is linked back to that finger size. So another easy change for me. Um, we'll go ahead and choose the size 8 instead of size 5. Okay, everything needs to update because it's all based on that ring size initially. Go ahead and give that a minute to recompute. Okay, so you can see with um, some anticipation you can, you can build things properly parametrically. So you can anticipate these changes. Now if you don't, it's not a big deal. You still have the full history, so I can always update things manually. And again, I don't have to undo or restart or or do any of that to make changes just go back through the history update the ring size maybe have to move the crown up a bit manually because i didn't link it properly things like that so you know it depends the more work i put into the initial design the less work i may have to do if there's changes um so there we go we have the new ring for her sister with the the new size the name change the stone is updated as well Um, so now Mary and Don, uh, Mary and Lisa, forgetting their names already, um, their younger sister comes in, Dawn, and she, um, you know, she can't have her sisters with this beautiful ring and not have one of her own, but she has a little bit more limited budget. She doesn't have a stone to put in the center, so she's going to have to buy some stones. She can't afford a big half carat or even a three-quarter carat stone, so she wants to put some, some smaller stones in there to make it look like a big stone. Um, so again, um, we'll change the name. You saw that in the last part. I can do that again for you, but you saw it's the same process. Um, for the center thing, 
we have a different design again. It's it's a fundamental change to the to the top of the piece. So again, we can use what we already have and still change it. In this case, I might do another save as. So since we're we're changing it up to a a, a new design from based on the first two designs. And again, we just simply I'll get rid of these parts. I haven't boolean them yet. If I did boolean them, just undo that step by just right click and undo. Go ahead and undo that cutout. Um, again, I don't know what cluster setting we want to build. We may have to, you know, build a different top for it. it. Just depends on how different the change is. But she likes the top. She just wants to add a cluster. So we'll take out the cutaway and real quick, we'll um, set up a cluster here. I'm just going to do a pave with some manual pave here. Set up some symmetry around the axis that would be the z-axis and oh, get ahead of myself here So we'll set up our uh, pave to, to build the cluster. I'm gonna use some symmetry just to make things a little quicker. I'm gonna use the OZ axis. Okay, and we'll start adding our stones. Okay, and again, you know, this is design aesthetics but I'll just throw some some pave in here so I've set some positions and we go ahead and create the stone and we'll go ahead and set those into place again creating some seats some prongs I don't want to go through all that process right now keeping the video short just to show you those changes and how they relate as far as history um, one more thing, her sister has a smaller size finger, a size six, so again, I'll go back to my ring size builder. I'm still building everything off of each other, so we just recompute. See, there's a lot of steps now. <laughs> So it takes just a minute. Um, but again, the pave is built on top of that piece. It's all linked together. So we're, we're good to go. Like I said, the last thing would be to change that name, export it. We've just sold three rings from the same file. The initial part one building the ring probably took the longest time. I think it's been about 45 minutes on it, just getting it all set up, um, including a little bit of um, trying to figure out how it was going to approach the cutout mainly um, but once once I was all figured out the ring was done everything was was set up to make easy changes you saw the uh, rest of the changes they just took a few minutes each so we've just tripled our, our profit off of the one design so there you go hope you um that answers your questions on how to uh, approach a customer design scenario where they're going to make some changes whether they be simple changes that you already anticipated or even some changes that are gonna fundamentally change the, the design a little bit.